Good morning and welcome to our service from St John's on Sunday the 6th of June. A very warm welcome to you wherever you are this morning as we gather together to praise God. And I'm going to start by lighting a candle as we remember that Jesus, the light of the world, is with us. And then I shall pray the special prayer, the collect for this Sunday. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our first song this morning is Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Dwell. Let's say sorry to God using our prayer of confession. Lord, our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
and may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Bible reading this morning comes from Mark's Gospel. It's read for us by Penny, and then Sue will be talking about this passage. The reading is from Mark chapter 3, starting at verse 20. And the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When Jesus' family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that the kingdom cannot stand? And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand? And if Satan has risen up against himself, and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Let us pray. Lord, be with us this morning as we study your word. Open our eyes, our ears, our minds and our hearts to understand your message more clearly. Amen. Well, this is a complex reading with possibilities for a whole variety of different sermons. But the more I read it, the more I kept coming back to thinking about the family of Jesus, his mother, his sisters and brothers, who were all there that morning in the throng of people. We don't know a lot about his earthly family. We meet Mary when she's pregnant and through the nativity story. We hear her trust and faith in God as she strives to follow his word as she gives birth to Jesus. We know they were caring that they worried about Jesus when he seemed to go missing as a young boy. And then nothing more is heard. But from what we do know, it does seem fair to presume that he was brought up in a loving, hard-working family, where he probably followed in the footsteps of Joseph, learning carpentry skills and growing in ability through his first 30 years. I'm sure Mary would have been proud of her children and followed their progress lovingly. But then it all changes. Jesus puts down his carpentry tools and instead he begins to travel and talk and teach and upset the people in charge. He draws in crowds of people who are keen to hear his inflammatory words and to see what happens next. How must Mary have felt? Does she still remember the angel's words at his birth? Or does she fear that somehow he's had an aberration and lost any common sense? We read that the crowd was large. And then that line that I keep coming back to. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. They loved him. They worried about him. They didn't want him to come to any harm or get arrested, and they meant so well. 
but they just didn't understand. Perhaps they were angry, frustrated that he was letting down their good name, making them a laughing stock, an embarrassment somehow. Whatever their thoughts, they went out to restrain him. But Jesus was not to be stopped. He continues to speak out against injustice and false belief. He points out that infighting and greed lead to destruction and how the only true way forward is to believe in God and follow the will of the Holy Spirit. Now, sitting here today, we've got the benefit of knowing the whole story. We can understand these words better because we have read the whole of Jesus's journey. Through the church year, we walk in his steps and many of his words become deeply rooted in our minds and hearts. But for this crowd, it was all new, all different and extremely puzzling. How can this man, who many may have known as the local craftsman, how can he suddenly start to give his opinions about life and families and beliefs? It's not really surprising that Mary and his siblings tried to intervene. Whether through worries or fear or embarrassment, they wanted him to stop. They wanted him perhaps to return to the trusted and predictable big brother from of old. This new, energised and determined Jesus is just so different. He didn't fit in anymore and somehow seemed to be moving further away from them. I think it must have been really tough for Mary, watching her family separate and become distant from how they all used to be when they were together. When they call out to him, reminding him that his mum and his brothers and sisters are waiting, The response must have exacerbated that hurt. Who are my mother and my brothers? Who are my mother and my brothers? Now that's a tough one. At one level, it could have felt like a total rejection. Or maybe it would make you think you were no longer relevant, not needed anymore, discarded like yesterday's rubbish. The thing is, there's such a wide gap here in understanding. Jesus does go on to say, Here are my mother and brothers, but whoever does the will of God is my mother, my sister, my brother. He wants them to know that, yes, of course they're important. They're his family. But at the same time, his family is so much bigger. He is a family member to all who truly believe in God and strive to do his will. As we see elsewhere in the Gospels, there are many people who take his words literally at a human level, whereas Jesus is talking about the much bigger picture. His love for all humanity is poured out for everyone and in time his earthly family will come to see this. But the short passage here encapsulates that horrible mixture of upset and hurt, puzzlement and fear for Mary and the other children. Sadly, that happens so often in families. There's almost a sense of reassurance that it even happened in this family here in the Gospel today. Those outside the family home see one thing it can feel very different inside. Hostility, intolerance, apathy or need can all hurt or even destroy families. In my work I saw so many examples of people in crisis who were ashamed or afraid to be honest about difficulties. One lovely daughter of a frail elderly lady that we were all very fond of I remember she sat sobbing in my office, pouring out her story of a troubled upbringing, when as a child she had no name other than the hated one. Whatever awful situation had led to her arrival in the world was never her fault, yet she was blamed and punished. 
there were other families that barred siblings from saying their goodbyes, somehow fearing what could be said at a deathbed. And the pain and hurt of loneliness, where a long forgotten argument led to irretrievable breakdown in communication and then inevitability of separation. Yes, life can be hard for so many. It's not always how the romantic novels portray it. And there's never a simple solution to those troubles, because they all begin in different ways, with different agendas and characters. In our lives we are urged, as followers of Jesus, to listen to his words, follow his example, and try our best each day to draw closer to him. Part of that command is to love our neighbours as ourselves, to love the unlovable ones, the embittered ones, the moaners and the boasters and everyone else in between. Yes, of course he wants us to love our families, especially when we make mistakes or act in a way that lets him down. He wants us to try to build bridges to be fair and just in our actions and to encourage children and grandchildren to live lives that are full of love and joy. Mary and her family came to understand that bigger picture that Jesus shared so widely. They were with him right up to his final hours on the cross, loving him totally, understanding how, despite the differences, he had his purpose and the, he was, and the meaning of why he'd lived his life in this new way. And I think that's the most important message from today's reading. There are times for each of us, just like Mary, when we feel hurt or embarrassed or we feel unfairly rejected. And the goal is to see beyond that hurt, to aim for the bigger picture and to trust that in time we might understand the situation better and see through fresh eyes. Jesus offered himself as part of the family for each one of us. What a privilege, what a wonderful offer and something we should never ever forget or take for granted. Amen. Heavenly Father, you call us to be your friends and to make friends of others. 
More than that, you call us to recognise others as our brothers and sisters and to share your love with the world. So we pray now for ourselves and for the world and its people. We pray for all areas in the world where deep divisions run between people because of race, religion or past history. We pray for areas of the world where people are terrorised by war and violence and ask that your spirit would lead people towards peace and justice, even in the darkest and most difficult circumstances. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for communities in our own country where different traditions lead to suspicion and misunderstanding. Lord, help your people to listen well to each other and to welcome those who have been pushed to the margins of society. Use us as channels of your peace and love. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends and thank you for those who've loved and supported us. We ask your forgiveness for times when we have spoken harsh words and hurt those who are closest to us. Please help us to be more patient, loving and kind. We pray for families where relationships have broken down and especially for children and young people who are living in fear or have left their homes because they weren't safe. Please surround them with your love and care and bring people alongside them who can guide and mentor them. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for your church and all who minister in your name. Today we pray for Julie Connolty and Sam Corley who've been appointed to serve as bishops alongside Bishop Mark in the Diocese of Chester. Give them wisdom and a sense of your abiding love as they take on these new roles and respond to your call. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn and particularly those who've lost family members in recent weeks and are now preparing for funerals. Surround them with your light and love at this sad time and sustain them in their grief. God of love, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We affirm our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final song this morning is Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us, you are one with us, Mary's son. Oh, we will love, we will be
loving God, you sent your Son into your world to gather us all up into your kingdom. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to share your love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon you this day and in the days to come. Amen. Thank you.